I want to share a little bit today about light the fire again. I don't know about you, but, but I constantly light the fire of God inside of me. You know what I'm talking about? I stir up again the gift that's on the inside of me. Otherwise, if I don't keep operating, if I don't keep stirring, if I don't keep pushing through, I'll go to sleep. Is that okay to say that? And I, I believe much of the church has gone to sleep because they've, they've just sat back. And, and you know, I, I think one of the greatest problems in Australia is she'll be right, mate. And somehow or other we think or we believe that, that it's going to happen because of this or because of that. But I, I believe that we need to understand that God wants to use his church. And he wants to use each and every person. And what happens in church at times is that we rely on, on the pastor or rely on, on somebody else. Well, they're going to do it for us. They're going, no, friend, I want to say this. If to wake up, God wants to use every one of us. Amen? God is no respecter of persons. He, he, he wants every one of us to understand that there's the anointing of God's on your life, the word of God's inside you, and he wants to cause us to rise up and push through. Now, I know with, with myself and that, I can look at circumstances, I can look at situations, I can look at you know my own life, and I can say, well, I can't do that because. But I want to tell you I've got one answer for you. I can do it because Jesus Christ rose again from the dead, and he filled me with the mighty Holy Spirit power. Amen? He said, it's better if I go, because when I go, I'm going to send the mighty Holy Spirit. When the mighty Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power to become a witness un under me. I, I believe that God wants us to, to do that. And I'd like for you to open up uh, this morning to the book of Romans chapter 8. And I want to just share, if God be for us, who can really be against us? If God is for you, who can really be against you? I was just uh, talking to Roma over there this morning, and, and uh, she's just got up there, and, and uh, she's been sharing her testimony out west, and as a result of that, people are coming to Christ. People are inquiring. People are, are being stirred because of, of that. And, and, you know, I praise God today that, that whatever happened through Roma, and if you haven't heard her testimony, you need to hear it. Just amazing things. I said to Roma, I said, Roma, you've got to take that and you've got to slap the devil up the side of the head with it, that he's going to be sorry the day he ever messed with you. Amen? He's going to be sorry. I reckon he's already wooing the day that he did it. But anyhow, let's have a look at this uh, in verse 8. Uh, and I'm just going to read from verse 31. It says, What then shall we say to these things? And, and I believe that with humanity... When things come against us, many times we take the thing that comes against us and we start to speak about the thing. We start to speak about the sickness. We start to speak about the situation. And, and we allow that thing to get inside us until it gets so big that, that man, we, we sort of get overshadowed by it. We get pushed down by it. But I want to tell you, if God be for us, who can be against us? So it's what we say to the circumstances and the situations and the lack or whatever it might be that gets around our lives. It's what you're going to say to those things. And I believe today that, there's our, as we've already heard, that our tongue is a small part. But I want to tell you that God wants to use our tongue, and I believe he's going to do that in Jesus' name. Do you believe it? What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. He who did not spare his own son, he who sent his own son to deliver us. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. God won't bring a charge against you. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died and furthermore is also risen, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. I believe he's, he's beside God saying, come on, you know, to hear, listen to what they're doing down there. Listen to what they're saying. 
Listen to what, how they're speaking about, about me and about what I've done for them. And, and there, there, there's something about faith that can push us through. Amen. And God right now is interceding. He's, he's praying and he's believing for a great outpouring. Everything that is in this book, everything that God said he was going to do is already established. He said he was going to pour out his spirit. He said, I will build my church that the gates of Hades will not prevail against. He talked about a latter rain revival. He talked about a church without spot or wrinkle. He talked about a church that thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph. Friend, I want to tell you those words are echoing through the chambers of society and through life itself. And we've got to grab hold of those things. My God, I thank you today that if God be for me, who can be against me? I thank that there's no weapon formed against me that can prosper. I thank God today that we are more than conquerors. I thank God today that we are head, we are the head and not the tail. We are the overcomers not being overcome. I believe that God has given us everything that pertains to life and to godliness. I believe that we have the, mighty, the greatest power on earth, more powerful than any, anything that man can create that dwells within us. And we've got to release this power. We've got to release this anointing that says that if we lay hands on the sick, that they will recover, that we can speak to demonic forces and they will flee, that we can resist the devil and he will run from us. See, we've got to understand who we really are so that we can, we can rise above the, the onslaught of the enemy. Otherwise, we get overshadowed by the negatives of life. There's so many things going on in this world today because, you see, there is a conspiracy. <laughs> There's a force out there that has got into the hearts and minds of men and women that today that want to control this world. The devil from the very get-go wanted to take authority and, and rule the world. Amen. And he's going he's to use people just like God uses the church. He uses people. And he's got people in high places today. He's got people all over the world. But I thank God that God's got his church. And he said, my church will rule and reign over those things. But if we don't understand that, we'll see the negativity. We'll see what's going on in the enemy's camp. And we will just, we will just go back. But we're just going to go into that enemy's camp. Amen. We're not ashamed of the gospel. We're going to speak the word of God because the word of God is living and it's powerful. And it's, and it's, and it, and it's like it will explode in the enemy's camp. Amen. And we're going to go in there and we're going to take back. I don't know about you, but I realize that we, the church, have got to take back a lot of stuff. Amen? We've got to take back our position in Christ. We are joint heirs. We are joint heirs. Mighty, mighty privilege that is. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword... As it is written, for your sakes we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than what? Conquerors. See, you can get overcome or you can overcome. You can triumph over it. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. I think we should give the Lord a clap for that. Amen. Are you persuaded today? Are you persuaded today that nothing can separate me or you from the love of God. Are you persuaded today? I've been sharing a little bit uh, recently about people forgetting. What stops this, un this awesome power of God? What stops this unstoppable, awesome power of God from penetrating into our lives? I believe it's because we in Australia may not have experience God's mighty power. It may have been for some other reason, but I want to tell you today, many times it is because we forget 
how great our God is. One of the great songs I believe in the past, and, and I believe it's very, very relevant. What we've got to be careful of, I believe, in these days that we live in is the opinions of men and women. A lot of people say, you know, old songs. But I want to tell you, there's one of the great songs of old, How Great Thou Art. How Great Thou Art. And I want to tell you, when you start to sing that, I've seen congregations that are, that are you know, happy, clappy, yappy, whatever it might be, just sitting there. But all of a sudden, when they start to sing, How Great Thou Art. How great. And as, as they start to sing that, all of a sudden, a different mood comes into the place. A different atmosphere comes into the place. As people start to lift up their hearts and lift up their hands, and they begin to sing about a Creator who is greater than anything that would ever come against you. Amen. How great is our God. How great thou art. And oh, I've heard people there until their tonsils are rattling in the back there, singing their little hearts out, amen, and making melody unto God, and the presence of God coming down and getting all around people, tears starting rolling down people's cheeks. Friend, that's meeting with God, amen. We've got to be careful that we don't get into the rut and, and into, the, into the pattern of modern church. We, I, I want to be a man or a woman that can just come into the presence of God and lift up my hands and worship Him, amen, and sing the songs of old in Jesus' name, amen. Awesome songs, Scripture songs, amazing songs. But people say you shouldn't be singing them anymore. They're a time of the past. I believe it's our time. It's time to get ready. Time to remove all the hindrances that, that get around our lives. I was sharing last week a little bit about how in, in Psalm 78, 41, how again and again they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember His power. They did not remember His hand, His hand of provision that was outstretched towards them. They forgot how God delivered them out of the bondages. He turned rivers into blood and Swarms of flies and frogs. They forgot God and God's ability to save, to protect, to triumph. In Luke 9 verse 11, there's a story there. I'm not going to read the story, but it's a story of, of Jesus and he's speaking to the multitude. People gathered, out, gathered around and it says as, as, he, as they gathered around, he began to heal and all those that needed to be healed. He needed to help people. He wanted to, to pour out his love upon people and healing was flowing. But the hour was getting late and he spoke to his disciples and he said to them, he said, hey, he said, the hour is late. We need to help these people. We need to feed these people. But you see, the disciples, there they, 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 they still thought carnally. And they said, oh, he said, where will we buy the bread? It's going to cost 200 denera. In, uh, then, he, then they said, there's 5,000 men. There were three things that God didn't ask. Jesus didn't ask how many. He didn't ask how, how much it was going to cost. <laughs> where to buy it, yeah. But there were three things that, that he didn't ask. All he said is you go out and give it to them. See, what happens with us now is God says to, to us, the church, I want you to go out there and be me. I want you to go out there and do the things that I did. I want you to go out there and lay hands on the sick. I want you to go out there and speak my word. I want you, but you see, what happens is we go back to the questions. But who am I? I can't do it. Friend, we've got to get rid of that. And here it is, they, Jesus says, okay. And, and, and they said, all we've got is a few loaves and a few, and a few fish. And he said, first thing he said to them, he says, give it to me. Give those things to me. And, and he took that bread and he took those fish and he began to break them. And he, bring, and he took it and he began to break it. And as he was breaking it, he lifted it up to the Father. 
Friend, I want to tell you that you and I have got a resource that's flowing from heaven today that if we can realize that no matter how limited it looks, how small it looks, if we're prepared to take it, if we're prepared to give it to Jesus, that he will take it and he will is beside the Father. He's going to intercede on our behalf. He's going to allow the Spirit of God to flood your being and you will see exceedingly abundantly above more than you could ever imagine or think. But I want to tell you, friends, if we don't do anything, nothing gets it's done. It's time to light the fire again. Here they are. They saw the, the mighty provision of God. Then again, later on, there was a, the 4,000 fed. But a little while after that, they find the disciples get into the boat. And they get into the boat. And as they get into the boat, one looks at the other and said, Man, we forgot to take the bread. Jesus had just been speaking to some, some religious people and he wasn't very kind to them and they were feeling a little bit upset perhaps. But they get into the boat, they've forgotten the bread. One of the uh, verses of Scripture says that they had one small loaf with them. And, and they, they said, we forgot the bread. And they started to get all agitated. But friend, I want to tell you, it wasn't that they forgot the bread that was a problem. is that they forgot the mighty provision, the hand of God. If God fed 5,000 with a few small loaves and a couple of fish, surely he could feed 12 with one loaf. <laughs> Amen. See, what happens is we forget. We forget the power of God. We forget the anointing of God because we get into this situation where, where you know, we get bombarded, we get hurt. But I want to tell you, if you can rise up like Roma's rising up right now, and she's speaking with authority, and she's speaking out there, I want to tell you, the devil will be sorry he ever messed with her. But I want to tell you, he'll be sorry he messed with you too. Because we do have to get over some things. We've got to start to remember this, the power of God. We've got, I, I tell you what, I want God to light the fire, the passionate fire, for number one, for Christ himself. Number one, I want a passion inside me that'll, that'll cause me when we're dancing to dance. Hallelujah. Amen. When we're singing, I'll throw my hands in the air. When we're worshiping, I'll worship with everything inside me. I want God more than anything else. Hallelujah. Amen. I want God more than miracles. I want God more than uh, thousands of people. I, I just want God. Is that okay? Just to fall in love again with Jesus. Just to be so appreciated of him. As, as, as we're singing that song, it obviously touched Kendall's heart. That, you know, that's, well, I can't remember the name of the song now. But this is amazing grace. Can, can, you, can you catch my drift here today? Yeah. This is amazing grace. That you would die for me. You, look, friend, I want to tell you, you can get, people say you shouldn't get emotional, but I want to tell you, God gave us emotions. Yeah. Amen. It's okay to, to have a, for a man to have a tear rolling down his cheek. It's okay to get passionately involved with our God. It's all right to, to, to say, God, I just, I just appreciate you so much. I, I'm, I, I'm amazed. Just get amazed. This is amazing love. And as I was singing that, I'm thinking of that God would die for me, a sinner. And I, and I can appreciate him and I can throw my hands in the air and I can love on him. Amen. I need God to light the fire again, the passion that burns inside us for him, but also the passion for souls, the passion to, to see the church flourish on this, in this land. We've got to remind ourselves of some of the, the amazing things that God did. And as I was preparing this, and I'm just starting to think uh, about different things in, in my own life. I, I, was, I, was, I was 13 when I left school, uneducated. But, but I, felt, I found Jesus at the age of 27. Came into my life in a dynamic way and, and, and touched me. I fell in love with him. I, gave, I surrendered my life. And it was amazing the way God just started to program my life. I can only talk about me, really. I can't talk about you because you've got your own journey. But my journey, I pray that it, it may be able to encourage somebody today. We came down here to, to plant a church on the Sunshine Coast, and everything was going great. I was reading an article in the papers. I found some old paper clippings since I've shifted and talking about the, 
uh, Mark Furler wrote a story about our church of a thousand people in the, on the Sunshine Coast and so forth. Here we are, we're just there, and all of a sudden, the greatest tragedy as far as I was concerned happened when Clark fell. And, 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 and I became the international president of Christian Outreach Center. I felt so inferior, I felt so bad. I, I thought, my God, everybody around me, other denominations, all felt that Christian Outreach Center would collapse. I had people come to me later on and say, Neil, we never thought you'd make it. We never thought that movement would make it. I think at the time when I took over the movement, there was 114 churches in Christian Outreach Center. But I want to tell you, when God can get into your life and God can start to move, you'd be amazed what God can do. When I left Christian Outreach Center, I think we had over 5,000 churches in over, I think it was 45 nations. The way God just started to move, nation after nation would open up. Church after church, we had a church, and we still do, in every coastal town in, on the Queensland coast. Then we went into New Zealand, into, into, sorry, New South Wales, then into New Zealand, then into Victoria, South of Western Australia, all over the place. Every major town in Australia has got a Christian Outreach Centre church. We train people by the hundreds. Every, every year we'd have a ministry training school of over 100 uh, uh, couples going out starting churches. We'd have all the, all the towns that were available. I'd say, I'll have this one, I'll have that one. And away they went. Some of them there didn't have a clue what was going on. But we pioneered, we birthed something. Amen. I believe that God is going to birth something again. I, you know, we might not be seeing souls being saved in our church here, but I have got a passion for souls. And I'm believing that God is going to give us souls. Amen. I believe that there, there's something inside because there's a passion burning in there. I want to see people set free. I want to see people come alive. I want God to light the fire again, the fires of revival that went across this nation of Australia. I believe it's going to start again. I, I don't know what God is doing, but Clark and I got restored about two weeks ago. Amazing things started to happen. Clark's coming to preach here in September. And uh, I'm excited about that. But I'm excited because I'm going to challenge Clark. What he, he said to me, he said, Neil, when I was talking to him, he said, Neil, he said, we saw thousands of people touched by God. He said, we said that. And I'm going to come to him and I'm going to say to him, Clark, what God did back then, can he do it again? I believe he can. Hallelujah. I believe he can. Got nothing to do how old you are. I want to tell you, don't die till you're dead. I'm younger than most pastors in Brisbane and, and on the Sunshine Coast now. Amen. I don't care how old they are. It's something on the inside that bursts that will keep you alive. I want to challenge you. You will, you will feel like you've got a burr in your undies if you keep coming to this church because you're going to have to get up and do something for God. Amen. I want, to bur I want to stir you. I want to stir you. I want to stir you. I'll do whatever I can to stir you. Hallelujah. I will put whatever I can. I'll put a fire under you if I have to. Amen. I'll preach my little heart out. I'll say whatever I can say. I'll do whatever I can do. But I want to tell you, I believe that's got to come a lighting of the fire again. The fire that's... I want to tell you, every one of you have got a purpose and a plan in God. Every one of you, you've got a passion in God. Some of you have laid it down. Some of you put it aside. Some of you said it's over. I want to tell you it's not over until somebody sings. Hallelujah. And I, that person's not even now up at the microphone. Glory to God. It's just the beginning. The greatest day of our life is about to happen. Amen. The greatest his time in the history of church is about now. There's a bunch of people that's rising up all over the place. I want to tell you there's a fire in my belly that I cannot put out. I don't want to put it out. But it gets me up in the morning. It gets me up in the middle of the night. It gets me up whenever it wants to get me up. But I want to tell you, I'm going to stay up in Jesus' name. Amen. We need to light the fire again, the fire that, that sometimes... I... I 
I'm reminded of the disciples when, when Jesus came and it says that, that, he, that he said, receive the Holy Spirit and he breathed on them. Hallelujah. Oh, I don't know about you to raise your hands right now if you want God to breathe again on the gifts of this, on, that's on your life, the giftings that's in your life. I want to tell you, God needs you. God needs you to rise up. He doesn't need it just to be a memory. I, I remember, I remember lighting fires. I remember going in campaigning. I remember seeing churches birth. I want to tell you, I'm letting that stir again inside me because I believe we're going to birth churches all over the place again. I believe that God's going to raise up a great army army of men and women. I had somebody walk up to me the other night and he said, I believe, Neil, that, uh, that you've had a lot of broken down pastors coming into your church. And uh, I said, that is a lie from the pit of hell. He said, I oh, what? He, I said, that is a lie from the pit of hell. I said, I got pastors coming to this church, but I said, they're not broken down. They're on fire for God. Hallelujah. They didn't come in broken down. They come in on fire for God because God's about to do something in this place. Hallelujah. You've got to cut the devil off at of the pass. <laughs> Oh, I would have thought, oh, I've got a lot of broken down my old pastors. Oh, glory. To That's, I'm one of them. Glory. No. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know about you. Light the fire again. Light the fire. Breathe on us afresh, my God. Stir us up again, my God. Stir us up again. Oh, let the wind of revival blow. Let, let, let the excitement of Jesus get inside us. Amen. Because I want to tell you, it's better felt than felt. The mighty Holy Spirit outpouring. The mighty power of God. The mighty power of God. The mighty, mighty power of God. The mighty Holy Spirit power. Come on. Lift up your hands in this house right now. I am not ashamed of the gospel. Light the fires again, my God. Light the passion, oh, that it will burn deep on the inside of us. Oh, that it will cause us to rise above the ashes of humanity and life. Hallelujah. That we would rise up above it in Jesus' name. Oh, that we'd soar with the mighty eagles of God. Oh, my God, that we'd go out and share the gospel again. We'd go out there and talk again to people. We'd gather the lost. We'd gather the lost, my God. We'd have a, have a mission. We'd go out to gather the lost. We'd start to talk to people that are unsaved and tell them their need for Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, we give you praise.